Hey guys, welcome back to the PUBG Xbox Full Match Walkthrough Series. And today we have a little bit of a different video. Uh, I thought I'd go over a new way that me and my teammates like to play squads from time to time. And this really depends on how things are going. If we're going through a bit of a rough patch and we haven't won in a while, then we'll decide to mix it up and try some new things just to see if we can change our luck or discover something that might work and uh, get us a win. So what we decided to do, it had been one or two weeks since we had won, I think, and and that's a pretty long break for us. Usually we win, you know, one game a week at least, uh, if not a couple. And so going a couple weeks without a win was pretty frustrating for us. We actually, you know, finished second place quite a few times, and so we were really feeling the bad luck, and we were really feeling uh, some of our bad play, I guess you could say, and we just wanted to change things up. So what we decided to do was promote a squad leader, and basically that squad leader is in charge of the full match. So any major decisions, where to go, what to do next, whether or not to fire on people that don't see you, uh, should we stay close to the zones, should we push towards the center, all those types of decisions that you usually make as a squad together. Uh, we promoted one squad leader, and we just had him lead the way, and we would follow. So in this match, we promoted my friend Arch Nemesis, and it was basically his call to you know do what we're going to do throughout this match. Now, the first thing I'll point out is definitely the fact that you know, Arch Nemesis told me to drive along the coastline and try and find a boat so that we could pass up the bridge completely and just get to the other side of the military island. Uh, that way we wouldn't have to try and go across the bridge and come across a bunch of bridge campers, get blown up, you know, and just end our match that way. We wanted to find a boat, uh, so what he told me to do was just drive along the coast. So that's exactly what I did, but unfortunately I got a little too close to the coast and I ended up falling down, so... Um, you know, didn't need a squad leader to tell me that we needed to swim, and we had to swim all the way across the water. But we were able to make it before the zone got to us, and we were able to push up here into this next area. So moving a little further along, I see a guy up here on the tree, and so I'm going to try and take a couple shots. And the squad leader is pushing up, and so I tell him right now, there's a guy coming down right to your left, right to your left. And to my great surprise, as you could see from the kill feed, and you probably heard it for yourself, he had an S12K for some reason as a secondary weapon. Um, usually, you know, when you're looting, you want to switch that out for a sniper or a SMG or something like that. But I don't know if he just didn't find anything else or if he was just feeling the S12K, you know, during this match. Uh, whatever it was, it worked out. I really wish we had the complete end game audio for that because as soon as I saw that, everybody just started busting up laughing. And, uh, you know, those are the moments in PUBG that really make it a fun game and a unique game because. That's just something crazy that happens that you don't expect, and it ends up being a pretty cool moment. So now there's less than 10 left, and I still haven't killed anybody, but my teammates are doing some good work here. But that's okay, it's a team game, I don't really care. But... I am able to get in some action here and I knock a player and my friend's able to finish him off so I, I do have that one kill now. Now there's only three enemies left so we decide to push up to the zone because there's only about 20 seconds left before it's going to start closing on us. But unfortunately Arch Nemesis is down and so we need to try and save him as fast as we possibly can. So I'm going to run up to the tree here and I'm going to try and heal him while my other friend is cleaning up the guy that knocked him. Um, I'm going to revive Arch Nemesis and just get back as fast as I can. But unfortunately before he's able to heal he gets knocked down again. And so at this point we just have to go. And there's only one guy left so it's a two on one at this point. And we both know that, uh, so we're just trying to run to cover, 
See if we can avoid getting hit because I am one hit by the zone or this guy. So I need to get to cover as soon as possible. Now we know he's behind this tree, so what I decided to do is just basically do a red zone. I have three grenades, so I'm going to try and chuck them as far as I can, see if I can get lucky and end the match that way. I'm pretty sure that third one hit him but unfortunately it didn't finish him off. So we're just gonna push up a little bit. We know that he has to move with this next zone, so we're gonna let him move first, and then just try and take him out as soon as he gets out of his cover. Basically what we're doing here is just shooting around the tree, seeing if we can get him to move at any way so that he exposes some part of his body. I missed just about every one of my shots at the end there, but luckily my friend Kaz was able to finish him off, and we secured the victory. So it felt really good to get that win, so, you know, what the hell, we'll decide to go for two. Trying to get back-to-back -back chicken dinners, go for seconds, and see if we could pull it off again. We landed in Erangel once more, and so we decided to try and do the same thing, land in Yasnaya. You probably guessed it, but since that worked... We have that same squad leader, and he's going to call the shots, and we can see what we can do. Um, I do recommend doing this, though. If for some reason you guys are struggling, or you know, if you're looking for a way to kind of mix up the game, because I know a lot of times when you're running to the zone or deciding what to do, it can get kind of congested in the party. Everybody has an opinion on what to do, obviously, and they're going to think you know their way's right. And so, if you got three or four people talking back and forth, you know, everybody might not have the same idea of what to do next. Um, so if you promote one squad leader and just let him run that game, let him have the whole match, and then you can kind of see, you know, where you got to go next, and, uh, you know, you just follow the leader, basically, and if for some reason that doesn't work, you switch to a new one, um, or if you got far in the match, maybe you let him run another match and just see how it goes, kind of like that one. We won that last match, and so we decided to let him go again, um, and so basically we're just going to follow his every command and uh, just try and survive as long as possible. Now, important to note here, um, in the very beginning, I found a Karn 88, but I'm not as good of a sniper as my friend Kaz, and so what I did is I ran over to him, swapped it out, I gave him the Karn 98, he provided me with a different weapon, because I know he's going to have a better chance of using that weapon than I am, and so to make the team as good as possible, it's good to kind of find roles, uh, and my role is just basically the all-around guy. I don't do anything that well, but... You know, I'm not terrible at anything either, so. And right there you can see that it paid off. He was able to snipe that guy that was running away into the blue zone. So my decision to give him that sniper rifle was a good one. So after looting all those bodies, we just went ahead and moved to the zone. And we're just going to keep running here. Um, a lot of this match ended up being a marathon. Uh, we just kind of hopped zone to zone, kind of stayed on the outside. That was what uh, Arch Nemesis decided we were going to do, so just kind of stay out of trouble. We want to make sure that we get that back-to-back -back win if possible. Um, so we're just kind of playing the zone, trying to find out where all these people are, and now you can see there are only 12 remaining. So we've made it pretty far in the match already. There's We have three left, so there's only nine enemies, so possibly two or three squads at this point. Once again, we wait for the zone to close, and then we just push up. And we kind of hug the outside of the circle once it closes so that we can get a good idea of where people are, let them fight it out, and then if we have to engage, you know, we will do that. But our decision was just to kind of play it safe, hug the edge of the circle. We know we won't find many players out here um, because we are trying to get to the final circle. Now with only 10 left, we notice that there's some people on top of the sill, so we're going to kind of flank around the left and see if we can get into some combat.
Once again, squad leader's down. So we're going to have to try and do this. He was in the blue, so there was really no way to pick him up. And now my other teammate got knocked by an SLR. So I'm going to pick him up, and then we're going to get healed up if we can. Because right now there's only two remaining. And at this point, we're thinking that it's two on two. Unfortunately for me, I decided to boost, and I went a little bit too far to the left here. And I got knocked by that same guy with the SLR. Kind of a dumb move. I should have just went prone here. I don't think they would have been able to see me. And I could have fully healed up. But as I'm down, I'm hearing gunshots. So that tells me that it's a one-on-one -on -one down there. And we're the only team that has a couple players left. So luckily, we had this tree for cover. And I stayed prone this time so that I can get healed. Now one mistake I did make... I definitely should have used a drink after I put these painkillers in, just so I can get to full health faster. I think I was just freaking out at the moment and wasn't thinking about it. Usually I do that and get that health as fast as I possibly can, but at the moment I wasn't thinking about it. Apparently I was just worried about getting shot again. So we know there's one guy at the shed and one guy with the SLR to the left. And they are in a fight right now. And the guy on the left won the fight. I see I have a stun grenade equipped. So I want to get that frag grenade out so that I can maybe throw that if I get a little closer. Um, we know he's behind this tree on the left. So I'm going to decide that I'm going to flank to the right. The squad leader's dead. I can make my own decisions. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and push around to the right here and then see if I can get a better angle on this guy. And I see him and I know he sees me. Uh, so instead of peeking, because this guy's a pretty good shot, I'm just going to prime this grenade and get ready to throw it. And luckily for me, I timed that grenade pin perfectly. And right at the fifth second, it landed right at his feet. And blew him up. So I decided to throw a good emote in there uh, just for good measure, just because two wins in a row. This one, five kills. Can't really beat that. I basically wiped a squad at the top of that hill and then finished it off with a perfect grenade throw. So I will take it any day of the week. I don't care if I get one kill, five kills, zero kills. As long as we get the win as a team, that's all I need. This strategy really worked out and it was it was a lot of fun too because it was something different. A lot of times you're bickering back and forth, you know, we should go here, we should go there. Or just someone during the match kind of takes control. But if you designate a squad leader at the beginning, it's an interesting way to play the game. And if you haven't tried it already, I definitely recommend it just because it's just something different to try out. And I imagine there's some people that already do this or they have, you know, a more experienced person on their team that kind of takes the reins and takes control of where everybody's going to go. Or just maybe that someone's a little bit bossier than the rest of you. But yeah, I'll be interested to see what you guys say if you have tried this before in the past. Or if this is something that maybe is interesting to you that you're going to try with your squad. Designating a squad leader can help limit the conversation and kind of clear up the airwaves so that you can hear the enemies better. And it'll just make the game a little bit smoother overall because you're not split up. You're not making different decisions all the time. Um, maybe you don't want to necessarily get in an engagement, but one person on your team has a happy trigger finger. You know, that can be a problem. It can get your team killed if something like that does happen. So maybe give this a try next time you play squads, especially if you're having some trouble getting wins or, you know, you're just not having great matches. Switch in and out, you know, one person be squad leader and then the next and then the next. And maybe you'll find your designated squad leader going forward. If you liked the video or found it useful in any way, definitely give it a like and subscribe to stay up to date on everything PUBG. Remember to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. I have those links in the description below. But with that being said, hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Until next time, I'll see you later.